Welcome back Retro Gang, this time for my first ever trailer analysis video. Today I'm going to be analyzing a new trailer we got during Night City Wire as well as giving a few of my theories into what's going on within. Before we start I want to take a second to thank everybody here for watching, subscribing and hitting the like for the Y tag. Y'all are the best bro. thank y'all for all the growth we've had in just two weeks of creating content. Starting right off in the opening scene we have an industrial looking AV flying in toward the city center as well as many ads on the buildings. Nicola, a popular soft drink brand, Soya Sil Machistador, a candy company, Data Inc, a Netgear and Sabora retailer that secretly sells its customers information and this WW ad found in a total of 7 different places for what looks like an escort service or nightclub. Right in the center of the city we see a building that's owned by Arsaka. Above that are Network News 54 and Mr. Stud, as well as more holographic ads for some movies or shows. In the next scene, we see a few more ads. First, we have Spunky Monkey, another popular soft drink. Tengu, a brand that we've seen before but have little information on. In real life, Tengu are a type of legendary creature found in Japanese folk religion and are traditionally depicted with human and avian characteristics. Here it is again in V's apartment complex in the Watson district in the 2018 gameplay trailer. To the left of that is something that you don't normally see, a gang's logo displayed on a building, much less holographically, as if it was a major brand. This would corroborate the rumor that the Tiger Claws are financially backed by Arasaka, as it seems they own the entire building, with dojos and sparring centers within. In the bottom left is probably the best thing I've ever seen within a video game in my life, most likely a bar or gentleman's club. At 6 seconds we have drone like footage of the street level of Lizzie's Bar, a popular brain dance hangout in Night City, owned by the Moxes gang as well. In the front stand some people next to the first convertible Valafort Alvarado we've seen up to this point, as well as a few instances of this Lizzie Jizzy graffiti, probably a tongue in cheek joke about the effectiveness of their brain dances. We also can't miss the infamous Chromanticure mix it up ads, showing CDPR doesn't give a fuck about those that oppose their descriptive opinion of what the year 2077 will look like. If you don't know they got a lot of hate last year of this seemingly female figure having a massive dick within a very public ad within a game set almost 60 years in the future, which in my opinion is complete bullshit. I should also note that CDPR has an independent team that just for their curation of the advertisements throughout Night City. Moving on is a scene of Jackie meeting us in some hole in the wall dive bar. On the wall you can see two posters, one of an action movie released back in May of 2076. Hold on, wait, pause this one second. That ain't no action movie. That's a live concert by some boys called Tainted Overlord. Anyway, finish what you were saying. As well as In Vitro Homicide, a movie poster that was shown at the hands-on studio in Warsaw last week. 10 seconds in, we can see the same type of transport drone from the first scene delivering cargo, possibly owned by Decker, Tanaka and Rogers, one of the biggest shipping companies in the United States. As well as a standard AV flying by, we also have more ads and nods to companies and people within Night City. Below deck is an underwater themed nightclub built in an aquarium. To the right of that is the 3 Mouths 1 Desire brain dance ad for the Sasha Devon experience. Sasha Devon may be a popular sex bot or porn star. Kuroshi Optics above that is a cyberware manufacturer specializing in cyber optics. V has one fitted by the ripper dog Victor who we'll also see later on in the trailer. Beside that is a sign for the second amendment arms dealer. V encounters Wilson, a gunsmith for the second amendment as she walks out of her apartment complex in the 2018 gameplay trailer. Right over the highway is a sign for Kendachi, a weapons manufacturer specializing in melee weapons. To the upper right is another Nicola ad, this time in their field of chemistry variant and an orbital air building. Orbital Air is the leader in passenger and cargo transport to low earth orbit and was one of the major players in the first corporate war. Think of them as the SpaceX of 2077. What's left is various ads for sex shops, erotic brain dances and nightclubs. Moving on we have the Decker, Tanaka and Rogers transport drone from the first scene flying past the forearm statue figure that we saw in the Grimes 4AM music video. Who well, may be the Hindu god Vishnu but is unlikely because we know we are in the Westbrook district aka Japan town of Night City. See the traditional Tori gates and Japanese architecture nearby. Clearly Lit is a movie poster that is almost definitely inspired by the wildly popular movie based on the Bible stories of Jesus, Passion of Christ. In the distance stands a Softsys building, another software manufacturer that we've seen before but know too little about, as well as more Nicola and BD ads off to the right. 
Next is Street Kid V trying to realign his nose in the mirror of the bar El Coyote Coho after taking a heavy punch or kick, as well as some hanging newspapers. The top one reads, Corporate Mogul Antonio Lucchesi dead at 116. Antonio Lucchesi is the founder and CEO of Armatech Lucchesi, the company that would later become Militech. In the cyberpunk sourcebooks, Lucchesi is said to be 85 years old in 2020. However, he dies at 116 in 2077. Anybody with half a brain can tell you that that doesn't add up. He would actually be 142. It's interesting to see CDPR change the timeline of just one character when they've so closely stuck with it up to this point. The bottom one reads Valentino Ferre in Pacifica, 17 dead and 42 wounded. Why are the Valentinos in Pacifica and who are they fighting? As far as I know, they have no beef with the voodoo boys or the animals. I love these questions because it gives us so much to be surprised about when the game finally does launch. In the next newspaper above those reads, Explosion in Zeta Tech Lab, 31 dead. Zeta Tech is a wetware, hardware, and software design company and was another major player in the first corporate war. As the scene continues, you can see the Valentino's logo on the wall. We drive into the next scene with what looks like a paradox. Our standard Quadra Type 66 is moving, the lights are green, and the other cars are clearly on but aren't moving. Nevertheless, beside us are a civilian version of Mommy Meredith's armored Militech Chevalier from the 2018 gameplay trailer, a Thornton wagon, the badass Pontiac Fiero inspired Mizutani, and an Archer sedan. We also see a few more instances of the Below Deck and Data Inc. logos, two food plazas, and another soft drink ad. The people of 2077 sure love their soft drinks, bruh. At 14 seconds is another rendition of the Passion movie poster, as well as the Chromantic Cure and Soya Sel Machistador ads. There's various Latin graffiti and Spanish business names everywhere, so I'd speculate that we're moving through Valentino's territory, as we can see another Valentino's logo on this wall. There also seems to be an eating competition happening soon. Some women who are most likely part of the Moxes gang beat up on a dude in the next scene. He may have tried to take advantage of one of them with an instant regret. 16 seconds in and V is at the afterlife with Jackie, an infamous bar that has had many famous rocker boy patrons, including Johnny Silverhand and Kerry Uridine. There's another instance of the in vitro homicide poster and two chromed up customers in the smoking section. We then move into our first look at the Lizzie's Bar main floor, where many party goers indulge in brain dancing, as well as that one annoying person that's always on their phone at the club. We meet Jackie again, then end up getting a private dance session with Ali Wong. After is a closer look at what Lizzie Jizzy actually means. Which is a good segue into our very first look at my future waifu, Judy Alvarez. A woman named Evelyn Parker sits in the background, more on her later. They're in what looks like a backroom or basement of the Lizzie's bar. We know from the brain dance tutorial of the Night City Wire that Judy is a brain dance editing expert and she may be the in-house technician for the bar. Victor shows up in his office next with a huge illuminated spunky monkey poster against the wall with a more than average amount of trophies above. As far as I know, Ripper Dogs don't really win trophies so I wonder what he does in his free time and how he becomes so good at it. Next let's compare Victor in this scene with an identical scene from the 2018 gameplay trailer and it becomes very clear to see what CDPR has been doing with their extra time. No complaints here. At 29 seconds, Street Kid V's fixer shows him a magazine open to the car of the month, the Rayfield Arendite. It looks like we may still be in the El Coyote Coho judging from the color scheme. The Arendite is a very expensive and exclusive car akin to the value of a Bugatti Vision GT or a Koenigsegg Gera RSR. We've seen this car before in the Neo Kitsch style and substance poster but we finally get a name to match its beauty. Arendite is also a Witcher 3 easter egg, borrowing its name from the popular Silver Sword. While trying to steal the Arendite, V is jumped by Jackie, who also had his sights on acquiring the car. Then both are surprised by the NCPD. In the next scene, it seems V is being interrogated by an unknown officer with some melee enhancements and a smoking addiction. In the corner of the desk is a cyber deck, an interface that allows the user to run the net. Here's the same model on Placide's desk from the deep dive trailer. In the middle of the desk is what looks like a cred chip. As the scene continues, you can see the crooked cop cover his bribe with some paperwork. In the front of Lizzie's bar, we pass two bouncer Moxes chicks to get our first good look at Evelyn Parker. She is hired by V and Jackie to acquire critical information on the upcoming heist by way of a brain dance recording, which is why we first saw her with Judy. In the next scene is what looks like with a different set of choices the cops could beat our asses, then moving into another choice that's wildly different from what we've seen before, killing Royce before storming the Maelstrom hideout and never even having him as a boss fight. Incredible. Again, let's compare this next scene with an identical scene from the 2018 gameplay trailer. The lighting, textures, and character models have all been upgraded. 
The next scene shows us V and Jackie getting some Chinese food in what could be a mall or metro cafeteria. Behind Jackie is some tiger claws and brain dance graffiti. At 38 seconds in, V blows up a car that's definitely a Valiford combat cab, but with such little context, we can't say for sure if this is Dexter's Delamain. Hopping out of our Corporal AV, we bust up some punks on the upper level of the Lizzie's bar. One of them wears a tank with the Mox's logo and the word bitches below it. We haven't seen anything that confirms or denies the inclusion of male members within the Mox's gang, but it's possible because the Mox refer to themselves as, and I quote, those who protect working girls and guys within Night City. Painted on the court are the words, play it again Liz. This could be referring to the famous artist Lizzie Wizzy, or more likely the late owner of the Lizzie's bar, Elizabeth Lizzie Borden. Behind Jazz Hands is a poster that reads, don't fuck with the Moxes. Next we'll do our final comparison shot, again to the same scene in the 2018 gameplay trailer. In the next few scenes we see Jackie carrying contraband to Nomad V's modified 5 door Thornton, then racing off quickly. We then follow V jumping out of the alley side of a building onto a garbage container. Standing nearby is someone watching a busted TV. The notice on the lid reads, no children or infants allowed in the trash bins. <laughs> Not funny. The next scene is V with Jackie and Bug in what looks like a secret hideout, likely belonging to Dexter Deshaun. Also to me Bug looks very different from the cinematic trailer last year. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. At 56 seconds we get an updated version of the brain dance recording of the Maelstrom gang stealing the flathead bot, then a closer look at the relic chip developed by Arasaka that holds Johnny Silverhand's consciousness, note JS in its model number. Next we follow V and Jackie walking into Arasaka's Kampeki Plaza, their executive employee housing complex, then accessing cameras that monitor what looks like a server room, then an amazing view of the plaza. One minute and three seconds in and we move from another 2020 version of a 2018 E3 clip into our first look at the menacing Adam Smasher. Adam Smasher is the full Borg solo that gunned down Johnny Silverhand back in the year 2020. And again, I applaud CDPR for sticking so closely to the source material. I'll be doing a video dedicated to everything Adam Smasher and his history with Arasaka. Consider subscribing for that one. Next we go into another updated scene of the Militech agent Meredith Stout, then the beginning of the Corporal Life Path with Corporal V puking his guts out. Next is a scene of the beautiful black and red Arasaka aerodynes. These are retro night aesthetic through and through, but too bad mere dirt boys and girls like us will never be able to afford such luxury. The dark grey and red with gold accented interior enhances the taste of any cheap wine and will most likely transcend garbage like me and you into the status of royalty with just one one ride. Moving on, Corporal V dons a large wad of eddies from an Arasaka higher up. Then we find V and Jackie again in the afterlife chairing to Night City, followed by a burnout by Street Kid V and an all black Mizutani. A cyberpunk yellow Valafort Alvarado with chrome rims is parked nearby. At 1 minute and 11 seconds is V flying in an aerodyne with many ads displayed against the buildings. Body Without Limits was originally a Zeta Tech slogan but CDPR made some changes for unknown reasons. All Foods, Mr. Stud and Soy Sel Machistador are the most recognizable. As the scene continues we see the same Arasaka building in the background with a Network News 54 hologram above. We emerge into the next scene from the 2018 gameplay trailer with Jackie tossing V an air hypo that helps sustain Sandra Dorset set until the trauma team arrives. This time her tits are censored. Next Corporal V is in Lizzie's bar again, this time with two Arasaka co-workers judging from the matching suits. V is clearly on some kind of drug as he passes a chip to one of his buddies. One of them has a very Cyclops style cyber optic. At 1 minute 18 seconds, we're in Dexter's supposed safe house again. There are maps of Night City highlighted on the screens. In the next scene, V pulls out a Malorian Arms heavy pistol. Malorian Arms is a custom firearm manufacturer that have crafted weapons for well-known solos like Morgan Blackhand. Their motto is distinctive firearms for distinctive people. Next we move into Nomad V's chase scene, this time wielding the Dara pistol against the Arasaka operatives. Then another updated scene of Royce, and I have to add that the particle and fire effects look incredible here. Jackie lies to Misty about being bulletproof, then V dismembers this agent with a budget arms shotgun. Budget arms manufactures cheap, affordable firearms for everyone. At 126 is V shooting up a club with the redesigned Kang Tao Type 41 smart gun, with noticeably less bullet trail than in the 2018 gameplay trailer. Next scene shows V fighting one of the twins who's wearing a Maelstrom t-shirt, confirming that in 2077 everyone, even gangs, are dropshipping and it will never be dead. 
Next scene is of the brain dance kid and store clerk. The robber wields a Kang Tao pistol. On the counter is a simplified Rubik's Cube and the clerk sells a variety of stuff, from tumblers to oil to creatine. If you didn't know, creatine is a bodybuilding supplement. At 129 is a Tiger Claws member with a monkey wrench being impaled on electric mantis blades. This may be a part of weapon customization or a feature that allows us to augment our cyber weapons and enhancements. Either way those blades look sweet and I can't wait till they unveil more. There's also a Made in Arasaka logo on V's left wrist. 1 minute and 32 seconds in we are at one of the most impressive parts of the trailer. I'm giddy at the thought of being able to fit my character with a cyber weapon like that. Back in the chase scene we find out that the massive land of greenhouses is owned by Biotechnica. Biotechnica at its heart is an agrocorp turned biochemical company and is the extremely wealthy but relatively small company that invented Chu 2, the world's replacement to oil. At 136, V and Jackie are jumping out of the Kampeki Plaza building with what's most likely to be the relic chip while being chased by a trauma team drone. This is unusual because trauma team has no official ties to Arasaka. Maybe an executive has an elite membership with TT and called in for support? Whatever the case, we'll find out come November. The final scene shows Dexter shooting V, presumably in the head, but is through some unknown way saved, to then wake up to Johnny Silverhand realizing he's also alive and now a digital ghost. This is a far cry from the iconic junkyard scene, which I think is no longer considered a part of the 2077 storyline. Again, thank you all so much for watching. Remember to hit like for the Y tag and consider subscribing for more Cyberpunk 2077 content.